Hello and welcome here from the Polish seaside and this is what we call the Polish Golden Autumn. It's basically freezing, windy and there's some cold water behind me anyway. But another thing that's behind me is the new Nissan Pulsar. Well, I know it's not really new because in some markets it's been there for ages, but here in Europe it's relatively new. It replaces the Tida which used to be the Nissan Sunny. Now, these were pretty ugly cars. This one looks slightly better. It looks a bit like the Qashqai. Anyway, I've got a couple of hours uh, with the car because this is my first drive, first drive here in Poland. So, uh, I'm going to take you around this car and uh, tell you what it's all about. And, uh, well, we'll see how it goes. If this car looks familiar to you, you're right, it does. It looks a bit like the new Nissan Qashqai. The designers did a copy-paste job, then cut some springs off and lowered the car. So yeah, it looks like the Qashqai. However, it does have a few tricks up its sleeve. One of them is here in the back. And that's the massive, massive legroom that's in the back. Now, by the way, this seat is set for someone who was probably sleeping in the bag, in the, in the front, and yet I still have legroom here. Nissan says this thing has got legroom like a D-segment car, which by the way, D-segment cars are not selling very well in Europe these days, so they disappear, people switch to compact cars, and probably this is what Nissan has in mind with this car. This is supposed to be a fleet car, or so they say. Anyway, another thing is the boot. If you want to compete, you have to have a big boot, and yeah, the Nissan Pulsar has a pretty big boot. It's 385 liters, that's 5 liters more than the Golf 7, although 15 liters less than the Peugeot 308. So, uh, yeah, it's something to write home about, I guess, uh, because uh, Nissan says this thing is supposed to compete, about, compete against the best, and, uh, well, the Golf is sort of benchmark, so I guess they want this thing to compete against the Golf. Okay, so inside here in the front, uh, it's nothing revolutionary. I guess this is a bit of uh, the new Qashqai, this I think is a bit of the Leaf, and this is a bit of redesigned whatever. Mm, these are my really first hours, first minutes with this car, so what I can tell you is that all this is hard but solid. Yeah, that's the best way I can describe it. Uh, there are cup holders here, bottle holders in the door bins, uh, in the glove box here is a USB port, an auxiliary port, and a charging socket. So, uh, let's go and see how it drives, shall we? So how's the Nissan Pulsar on the road? It's okay. It's average, I guess. Uh, average, good average. Mm. I mean, I'm sorry I'm not boasting about how brilliant this car is, because it's not brilliant, it's a pleasant surprise. That's how I would, uh, how I would classify it. Uh, it's involving enough to drive in this I mean, let's face it, this is pretty basic spec. This is a 1.2 turbocharged uh, engine, uh, doesn't have uh, much power, doesn't have much torque, but it's got just enough to have you enjoy the driving, I would say. The steering is, well, not very precise, but again, it's nicely weighted, so um, you feel a bit involved. In, uh, in the driving process. The gearbox, uh, very slick. Uh, speaking of gear changes, uh, last year, or is it this year? Well, a couple of months ago, you can click somewhere here to, uh, to check it out. I drove uh, the uh, Honda Civic 
port tourer tourer god knows what the estate version is called anyway i drove the civic it was a naturally aspirated uh, 1.8 engine a 1.8 liter petrol engine and uh, in the civic which is very eco-conscious the computer wants you to shift up shift up shift up and you're doing about 50 60 kilometers per hour and the computer says you know go into sixth in this car the turbocharged 1.2 liter uh, nissan pulsar uh, the computer wants you to shift into sixth gear when you're doing about 70 80 which is more natural reasonable i guess this means that uh, you always have uh, this kind of usable rev range you're above 1500 rpm for uh, most of the time and when you're above 1500 rpm you've got uh, enough power reserve for this engine to sort of uh, pick up and to get you going it feels more involving it fe feels a bit faster than it uh, really is which is okay uh, I like the way this car drives and if uh, I was in the market for a city car I would definitely consider the uh, Nissan uh, Pulsar as a good alternative to the Civic. It's not really a brilliant alternative to, to, to the Golf uh, but it's a good alternative to the Civic especially if you do a lot of city driving and not much motorway driving because if you go on the motorway above 90 100 kilometers per hour the wind noise is becoming uh, obtrusive and uh, fuel consumption goes up considerably probably to around 8 liters per 100 kilometers at the limit which would be what 131 uh, 40 depending on the on which european country you're in and if you're going to be driving it on the autobahn much faster than uh, the normal speed then this engine is going to drink a lot however I've been driving uh, the Pulsar around the city and uh, on these country roads and I managed to average around 6 liters per 100 kilometers which is just about a liter more than the manufacturer claims I guess if I was a bit uh, more careful with the gas pedal I could bring it down to about uh, five liters like the manufacturer claims so yeah these figures are relatively realistic i reckon uh, the suspension is uh, set for comfort but it's good enough to uh, to go through through some bends uh, you're not going to be complaining too much about it if nissan launches some hotter mildly hotter version of this car it's going to be a brilliant uh, car to drive i don't know if i would go for the hot version of the nissan pulsar but as a package the way the car is right now i think it's uh, it's worth considering especially if you value a lot of uh, space in the car and uh, if you want your gadgets this car has this nissan safety shield business uh, which uh, warns you when you cross the uh, line so that's a lane departure warning system uh, there is blind spot monitoring and there is also city safety which um, uh, warns you if a car in front of you starts braking you don't notice it there is also a 360 camera when you're reversing maneuvering around the parking lot so yeah it's a decent package for uh, a pretty good price and what do you think about the Nissan Pulsar? Let me know in the comments below and watch my reviews of Nissan Qashqai and X-Trail. Also subscribe to my channel, new reviews every Friday. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google+. You'll find all the links in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.